حدثنا محمد بن عبيد الله قال حدثنا عبد العزيز بن ابي حازم عن نبيه عن ابي حازم عن سهل بن سعد رضي الله عنه قال Can I get a volunteer, inshallah? A volunteer, anybody? That's it. Okay. Tell us how they make salat to Janazah. Uh, after the first tech creator, recite the Fatiha. After the first tech creator, recite the Fatiha. Since the okay. You make dua for yourself on the fourth one. And then? Salam. Salam. Anything else? All right, Jazakallah Khairan. Pretty solid answer, give or take, but in general, you good. Anybody else can, can add what Brother Asad mentioned about the proper way of making Salat al Janazah? Fadl. So, you're different than what I said. On the fourth, no dua. Just silent. All right. What else? Anything else you want to add? There's no ruku or sujood. All right. What else? F1. What? And only to the right. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else want to add anything? Toy. So salat al janazah, just like the five daily prayers. There are things that are agreed upon. No difference, no discrepancy. Everybody agrees this is how it should be done. And then there are additional pieces, additional features, additional things that some say yes and some say no. So what we can agree upon, what Brother Asad had mentioned, is first and foremost, let's put both answers together. It's only qiyam. No ruku', no sujood, no coming out of ruku' or sujood, just qiyam. Obvious. Number two, you are going to make how many takbirat? You say at least four. Can you do a fifth, a six, but at least four? All right. First and foremost, the first takbir, no doubt, you should raise your hands like you normally would, and you're going to place your hands like you normally would in your five daily prayers. Okay, the solar plex, chest, navel, beneath the navel, etc., etc. Right on the left, hand, wrist, forearm, elbow. How you would normally make your, your five daily, your dhuhr, your asr, your, your maghrib, your fajr, etc. So, takbir number one, Allahu Akbar. Definitely raise the hands, for sure. And then you're going to recite Surah Al Fatiha. Make the isti'adha. Audhu billahi min shaitan al rajim, surah al rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, rahman rahim. Second takbir, if you want to raise your hands again, you can do so. And if you want to keep your hands still, that's fine as well. Both are valid options. And then you're going to send salams upon the Prophet his family, Ibrahim, his family. Okay, as salah Ibrahimiya. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin, etc. Takbir number three, once more. If you want to raise your hands, you can do so. But if you just want to pronounce the takbir, that's fine as well. And that's when you're going to make the dua for the deceased. Okay, now, there are specific duas that are mentioned and of course, the quickest way between two points is a straight line. So the best thing to do is to make the prophetic supplication. And that's a, that's a lecture in itself. Toba, forgiveness, guidance. You can ask Allah in your language how you want to. Allah, forgive me. Allah, give me this. But the quickest, fastest way between two points is a straight line. So we have authentic text stating when the prophet wanted forgiveness, this is what he would say. When the Prophet was afraid, when the Prophet was happy, when the Prophet... So it's very important to learn the prophetic supplications. So in the Salat of Janazah, uh, there are several versions of what the Prophet ﷺ would say or, or what, he, what he taught us to say. Everybody clear on this? Now, 
when you're making dua for a male, it's going to be a little different when, with regards to making dua for a female. Making dua for a child is going to be a little different from making dua from an adult. Obviously, you're not asking the law to forgive the sins of the child. Rather, you're asking the law to allow those children to precede their parents to the held, farat. Those who would uh, walk or ride a little faster above the rest of the caravan and it will prepare the water for the rest of the animals and the rest of the people traveling in the desert. So you ask Allah to allow them to be waiting for their parents at the Prophet pond and ask Allah to allow those children to intercede on behalf of their parents. As far as an adult male and adult female, you want to ask for forgiveness, mercy, safety, and protection. Allahumma ghfir, Allahumma ghfir lahu, Allahumma arham hu. Allahumma ghfir laha, Allahumma arham ha. Right? And obviously in the prayers, the best language to use without any question is the Arabic language. But I don't know Arabic. I'm not a scholar. I'm not a student of knowledge. Learn the supplication. You have no problem. And the safest thing is to keep the language of the prayer Arabic. But for argument's sake, can you make dua in your prayer with another language? That's a different discussion. All right, so you're going to make dua for all of the Muslims. Allahumma ghfir li hayyina wa mayyitina wa kabirina wa saghirina wa dhakarina wa unthana. Allah forgive our elders and our youngsters. Allah forgive those living, etc., etc., etc. And you're going to make dua. Um, uh, etc. You guys can learn that on your own time. And then the fourth takbirah, now we have a battle. Make dua for yourself or keep silent. What's important is, for sure, we can say, you can salam out once on the right side. Are there additional takbirs? That's a different story. That's a, a premium package fit. Everybody clear on this? So this is the basic way of making salat al janazah. And like we said before, you want to benefit for yourself, your own spirit, and you're going to do a service for the deceased. And a Muslim is always one-two punch, always. Helping people, but at the same time, you're helping what? Yourself. Yourself, selfless. But at the same time, you must be selfish. Don't forget that's it. Selfless, but what? Selfish. Your own hasanat, your own good deeds, through helping other people and not worrying about yourself and being there for your brother and your sister. So that's a basic way of making Salat al Janazah. Of course, like any other issue in Islam, there are going to be different methods, different small pieces, extras, but the general structure of the Janazah is going to be agreed upon, like the five daily prayers. And it's a very, very, very practical thing uh, to do, like he said, especially is always after each Salat. You know, they're announcing someone's death. So now, you know the janazah properly. You know the virtue of walking behind the janazah, burying it, praying on it, right? You make the du'as when you get to the, to, to the graveyard. Now you start polishing yourself now. And it's the fard, the sunnah, the this, the that. And that's how you stack up your good deeds, your hasanat. And you multiply, that's how you splice the atom. And the same applies to knowledge too, I said, huh? For one thing, you learn 10,000 things. And you apply it, you stack it up. And you bundle it up. Everybody clear this, inshallah, with regards to the basics of the janazah? Inshallah. Zakumullah khayran. Wallahu ta'ala. Alright, inshallah, we're getting hit on our way. Unless anybody has questions. Good chance about janazah. Now, Ahmed, go ahead. Can you make the prayer any time during the day? Janazah is going to be made based off of the need and the necessity. Nighttime, morning time, so on and so forth. If it can be avoided, with regards to the sun setting specifically, the sun rising specifically, but in general, is 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 going to there's a specific reason behind making the janaza, and that's based off of that need. Clear, Ahmed? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Any other questions? Can we make janaza? I got a question. Uh, can we pray janaza for somebody that passed away somewhere else? Can you make janaza for someone who passed away somewhere else? In general, uh, yes. Salat al ghaib uh, there, there are details with regards to to what extent can you make a long distance janaza on somebody. Someone who had no janaza, someone that was important, a major leader from among the Muslims, as the Prophet ﷺ told the companions, stand up and pray for Negus. Stand up and pray for Najashi. He has died. Your brother in Abyssinia has passed away. That righteous king, that Muslim. All right, so in general, yes. But to what extent can you make that long distance janazah? There are different views. 
Some say it's only applicable to a great leader. Some say it's applicable to one who has no janazah. And some generalize it all the way around. And they say you can make salat al ghaib walo sulli alihi. And so on and so on and so forth. Wallahu ta'ala alam. And, that, and that the beauty of that is a Muslim who may die in a state in which no one can pray on him. He's locked up or as a captive or, you know, um, something happened to his body or her body. Burnt alive, and, you know, whatever the case may be. So on and so forth. Wallahu alam. Where is the masjid built? How is it built? What are the levels of expansion? Before we go that far, what's the superiority, the virtue, and the merit of the prophetic masjid? إنه من الأماكن المباركة التي كان ينزل فيها الوحي على النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. It's a blessed place, a holy place upon which revelation descended. وفيه بقعة هي روضة من رياض الجنة. And there's a place which is called the Rauda, which is a part or piece of paradise. وفي حديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما بين بيتي ومن بري روضة من رياض الجنة. As the Prophet ﷺ tells in authentic hadith, my house. And my member, that section is a slice of paradise, a piece of Jannah. One prayer that you make in the Prophet's Masjid is equal to a thousand prayers in all other masjids except for the Grand Masjid in Mecca. Myth al 100,000 times. So, what is that equivalent to? One hundred thousand. المسجد الحرام ومسجد هذا ومسجد You aren't allowed to travel to any other masjid seeking to make ibad in any other masjid except for the three: Mecca, Medina, and Jerusalem. أما عن اختيار مكان المسجد النبوي الشريف، قد هاجر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من مكة إلى المدينة، ودخل المدينة من الجهة الجنوبية. As far as where the masjid is, where its actual location, then obviously the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he migrated from Mecca to Medina and he entered Medina from the southern direction. ونزل عند ديار بني عمرو بن عوف وبنى أول مسجد في الإسلام أو مسجد قبة. The very first masjid that was erected in Al Islam is قبة. And the Prophet ﷺ, he visited those companions, that specific tribe in that clan, and from there they built that masjid and established that masjid. وفي صباح جمعة ركب ناقته القصوى مرديفا ببكر الصديق رضي الله عنه متوجها إلى ديار بن النجار. So the Banu Najjar tribe, the Prophet ﷺ, on Friday morning he went out early with Abu Bakr behind him on his she camel to visit them, to see them, to sit with them. Name camel Qaswa. Qaswa. Name the Rasul. The Prophet said, "She camel Qaswa." And when he was walking with Qaswa, he noticed the Salat of Jumu'ah in the Diyar of Bani Salim ibn Auf, Ibn Aumat, Umar ibn Auf. Okay. So when the Prophet was riding, it was time for Jumu'ah. It was time for Jumu'ah. The Jumu'ah time came. All right. And then he went to visit Bin Salim ibn Auf, which there were relations. فصلى أول جمعة بالمدينة المنورة في مدينة لب والثين بالحجارة السوداء من حرارة المدينة. So not only did he expand it, but the actual materials were upgraded, and it wasn't just mud bricks, sun-dried bricks, but it was actual black stone, better quality, stronger material used for the walls and the construction. Okay, now we have. He says gold. Uh, marble and other expensive fine qualities and materials were used in Okay, and we see the different um, the inner construction of, of the gates from the inside. And the Prophet and his Islam's sacred tomb, his grave, that, that where he used to live and he was buried, that was now placed inside of the masjid. And now four minarets were also added. <laughs> now we have the mihrab, that little you know, encapsulated place where the imam stands and prays. 
Now 20 gates, 20 doors instead of 6, 14 additional gates. Now we have the windows placed for ventilation and uh, you know better lighting. So we now over 6,000 cubic meters now, square meters now.